what's up guys we're here welcome back to the channel so today i'm bringing you it's got to be it's got to be one of my favorites okay it's the staff of liam neeson aka charge bolts sorcerer in diablo 4 season 3 so i'm going to show you everything you need to know about the build the gear the skills the paragon all that great stuff and of course we're going to do a t100 on the back end because as we've had to state before you guys don't you guys don't confirm the build to be good unless we do t100 so that's exactly what we're going to do so let's talk about it this is one of my favorite builds i got to give a big shout out to demon muppets a huge member of my community uh for this build and we made a, a few changes to it obviously because there was a couple things that i didn't really I just didn't think it worked for me as a player, but you guys can definitely change up whatever you need to change up with the build. But me and him have been doing this since season one, and I think there's only actually a couple other people that actually like playing Charge Bolts. And with the staff of Liam Neeson, we are definitely having a blast with this build. So uh, to start off real quick, guys, this build can do all content. It can do bosses, but just like our Arc Lash build, um, it is a little slow to do bosses, but you can do them. Okay, it's a little slow, but you can do them. The build is just really, really fun to play, especially if you want to play something a little bit different. Okay, so let's go over the skills and just talk about everything really quickly. Again, all this stuff is going to be down in the description below with Mobilitics, so definitely check that out. So we are going to be going with Firebolt, guys. That's also going to be our um, first enchantment slot just to make everything burning. We're only taking two points into that. This is pretty standard with Sork. Um... Then we're going to come down. We're taking one points into Devastation for Elemental Dominance for more damage. Then we're taking Charge Bolts into Greater Charge Bolts. Now, depending on what kind of gear that you have for this, we do deal increased damage to stun enemies. And getting stun enemies is very easy to do in this build. We're going to be able to do it when we teleport with Raiment. And we're going to be able to do it with um, Lightning Spear, which has been revamped. Okay? Now, if you feel like you're still a little too squishy, then definitely do destructive. All right. And hitting enemies with charge bolts reduces their damage. Super easy. You just take less damage. Next, we're going to come grab a uh, flame shield with shimmering for health. Teleport into shimmering for DR. One point into elemental attunement to reset one of these. And then we max out glass cannon for even more damage. If you do feel like you're taking too much damage then take the points out of glass cannon and put them in teleport next we're going to come down this is a little bit of a lucky hit variant so we do want some lucky hit we're taking ice blades for our not only our cold damage for talrashas but for cooldown reduction we are taking lightning spear for not only stun but to help with vulnerability and then we're taking align the elements for dr as well as maxing out mana shield as well as protection for not only barrier but damage reduction Next, we got one point into Conjuration Mastery just for a little bit added damage. We're taking Inner Flames into Devouring Blaze for more crit. And then we're going to come down. We're going to take our ultimate, which is going to be Unstable Currents. Only with Prime. We do not need Supreme. We only need Prime. We're going to take Coursing for crit, but more importantly, Electrocution. So that way, enemies being hit by our Charge Bolts deal less damage to us. Next, we're going to take Permafrost. For increased damage to elites and then increased damage to chilled enemies and frozen enemies with horror frost we're also going to be taking frigid breeze for a chance against vulnerable enemies to make some more um mana now if you feel like you're okay on mana i would just take the points out of here and just go put them into teleport you can also take the points out of conjuration mastery and just kind of max this in all honesty i would probably just rock it this way and then our key passive of choice is going to be Essu's Ferocity. As of the recording of this video, 225.24, this key passive still has not been fixed. The same thing with Veer's Mastery also not being fixed. Veer's Mastery only works on the offensive end, so we do not get the damage reduction end here on Veer's Mastery. So Essu's applies not only your fire critical strike damage and critical strike chance, but it's applied to all elements, which is why we're running it. So we're going to get the increased crit damage as well as increased crit chance. And yeah, this just applies to all of our skills. So next we're going to go into our gear pieces here and I have some options for you guys. So starting off, we are going to be doing juggernauts. Okay, now 
Um, in reality, you would want disobedience because disobedience is going to help us with our evade. So really, you want this to be disobedience. I'm probably just going to go swap it for the absolute basic one just to kind of showcase. But you want disobedience here. You're going to be looking for um, intelligence, lucky hit chance, total armor, and then you want cooldown. Then, of course, we got remnants. This is going to help us when we teleport, not only from normal teleport, but teleport is also going to be our next enchantment slot. Um, now, with the enchantment slots, when you do do bosses, you will swap out uh, teleport for ice blades for more cooldown. But teleport for speed farming everything else because teleport with remnants is super powerful. It just pulls everything in. In this one way, we get our stun. Next, we got piercing static, of course. Try to get this maxed out. We got Tabalt's Will to help with resource as well as increase damage when we're unstoppable. And then we've opted in for Flicker Steps. So every time we evade, we reduce our ultimate cooldown by 4 seconds up to 10 seconds. So with Unstable Currents, every time this is popped and we evade, we reduce the cooldown. However, there is a trick, which is the same thing we talked about in our Arc Lash build. So with Teleport being in the evade slot, when you teleport and it pulls everybody in that is still counting as evading through the enemy so if you teleport with evade and you pull in say five people that's going to say to flicker step hey you evaded through five enemies we're going to reduce our cooldown by 10 seconds so that's a really cool little trick with this which is just not only is our mobility through the roof but it allows us to get unstable currents back really fast Next, we in our amulet, we're doing Ancient Flame. So while both um, bonuses from Esu's Ferocity Key Passive are active, your attack speed is increased. Now, there is a variant here, okay? If you do not want to run Ancient Flame, which is okay, you can put Disobedience here. And then in your helmet slot, you can do at all times God Slayer. You could do Shaco. You could do um, Andes. You could do even a basic helmet here and then put in another power, another defensive power if you wish. Um, so Esus just helps with attack speed. It isn't required, but you do have a flex slot there. Okay, I would probably do that and run like Shaco for the DR. That would probably be my choice here. Um, then we're doing Talrashes for, of course, damage. And then we're doing X-Falls here. So um, I'm not a big fan of X-Falls. However, the way X-Falls work says your damage over time effects have a 50% chance to erupt dealing a bunch of damage now our damage over time effects is literally just our firebolt enchantment so direct skills are going to burn for eight thousand damage okay over eight seconds the more attacks that we do applies more of this burning over and over again so if we get the x falls lucky hit proc we explode dealing a bunch of damage around so this is really good not only for just some added damage there but the cooldown and lucky hit chances very important as well so but if you do not want to run x falls you could do a normal ring um i don't want to have one on here so what i would say is if you want to do a normal ring you pull ancient flame put it in the ring you put disobedience in the amulet and you just run something else on your helmet as far as the as fall as far as the seneschal we actually would like to probably god this is tough because uh, we kind of want to add something else here, but this does work. So we got Adrenaline, Tactical, Duration, and Genesis. Then we got Breaking, Resource, and Evernight on Tempest. Okay, now if you don't need like the vulnerability support here, um, you can just drop this. And what I would put in and what I'm going to try to showcase is Frigid here. And this is really going to help us with our Horror Frost um, node there. So let's go over to our Paragon board and just talk about this really quickly. So we are only rocking five of these, okay? We are rocking control for more damage and increased damage against slowed or chilled um, or increased damage against stunned or frozen. So super good there. Destruction for more crit. We are taking elementalist for more damage across the board. We are taking reinforce for DR and we are taking exploit for even more vulnerability damage. I really wish that there was a way. I actually don't have my last one put in. Holy crap. What am I doing, guys? Why didn't you guys tell me that I had this in? Oh, my gosh. I forgot to add my last one in, which is Flame Feeder. Holy crap. I've been playing this build this whole time without one of my, <laughs> one of my glyphs. Okay. I'm a god gamer. Please don't judge me. 
All right, but we're rocking, we're rocking this, which we could probably actually just like dump a point there and put it into something else. But yes, then we have Flame Feeder uh, for even more damage against the burning, um, which is pretty awesome. So uh, as far as our legendary nodes, we're taking Static Surge. After spending 100 mana, we make enemies vulnerable. Then we're also taking Frigid Fate, which I need to get this as close to 30% as possible, but we're doing more damage because of vulnerability. And I believe that's the last legendary node that we actually have. So that's the build. The build plays very simple, plays very similar to Arc Lash. We're just going to pop everything. We're going to move through and uh, basically just static charge bolts everything. So we're going to go do this T100 real quick. I am going to go swap um, Juggernauts out for Disobedience. It's going to be the basic one because I do not have a max one, which is it's sad, hashtag sag, which is really a bummer, but it is what it is. Um, we were still able to hit our armor caps as well as our, uh, we're still able to hit our armor cap as far as percentage, as well as our elemental resistances. Um, if we have a max disobedience, we will hit the 13 K mark, but unfortunately we do not have one at the moment. So let's go ahead and go do, um, a T 100 vault to kind of showcase the build. So that way you guys can see it and yeah. This build is really, really fun. It is um, it is a very satisfying build. It's very different. It's very unique in a lot of ways. I would say that it's not the strongest of the builds, but it is super fun. So if you want to support me in the staff of Liam Neeson, then please do this. But this build is, is pretty, pretty straightforward. We're just going to go through and just pop stuff, right? Oh, we got the butcher. Look at that. Camille Butcher. And he killed me. Did I? Oh, I died from the uh, Stormbrain, Stormbane Wrath. That sucks. I was not paying attention to that. All right. Moving on. This is really good for the video. But yeah, you're just going to move through. You're just going to, you're just going to basically just fling charge bolts at people. And just blast through it. It's, it's a very fun build. It can, like I said, do all content, no big deal, except for getting one-shotted by Stormbane's Wraths, which are super annoying, by the way. I'm frozen. Oh, I died by a Vizer Construct, which is also a one-shot in this game, no matter what you do. Blizzard, please fix. Please fix the one-shotting in the vaults, please. Please fix this, okay? We shouldn't be getting one-shotted by constructs. Please change this. The build is super, super fun, though, guys. Um, you basically just blitz through the content. It's super good. I don't like that Like my armor only hits like almost 12K um, and l until we have a max disobedience. Um, however, there are a lot of swaps that I would probably make from this. But as you can see, it's like not bad at all. You just come through and just blast everything, man. The only, the biggest issue I would probably say about this build is because of the increased attack speed. You kind of just, a lot of times your, your resource is just low. So like resource gen would just be really good. Again, when I'm dying from a visor construct, I don't know if you guys can see this. We keep dying from a visor construct. It's uh. They really need to fix that. There shouldn't be visor constructs that just one shot you in the game. You're embarrassing me, Diablo, for my video. Okay. Besides the one shots, guys, with anything, the build is actually really, really fun. You just kind of just slide through, you pop all your skills. You get, you know what I mean? You just, you just blow stuff up. You dash as much as possible. Right, and you reset your cooldowns. Oh, hey, pants. And I went the wrong way. The build is really, really fun. I would probably put this at like a B tier build. You know what I mean? Just like probably B tier. You just go through and you just smash stuff. You kind of want to play it like a shotgun where you're just kind of like moving along, kind of throwing stuff. But the build is very, very fun. If you want to play something different, 
I definitely, definitely advise this build. It's super cool. I really enjoy it. The staff of Liam Neeson. It's, it's amazing. He would not take likely to my gameplay today. He'd probably call me up and tell me that he could find me. He has a very special set of skills. But you can see that our, our, our ultimate gets reset very quickly with all of our dashing. And we just kind of move through this no problem. I'm not even going to... Like, the build is just good. You just need to worry about getting flame shield on cooldown. Very important. Kill those visor constructs very quickly. Because they just one-shot absolutely everything that you do. And it's super annoying. Watch out for the, the Stormbane's Wrath. That one shot you as well. I feel like Blizzard did a, a silent buff to these things. Just a one shot. We already got our ultimate back and it's already popped again. But yeah. It has great AoE guys. It's a fast build. It's super strong. We attack fast. Again if you're having mana issues. I would drop Ancient Flame for just something else. Stormswell is good. Conceited is also good. We gotta just we gotta be careful on this Stormbane's Wrath. Otherwise we just die. Cause it's a one shot. But yeah guys, you clear T 100s no problem. You just clear them no problem. Besides the one shots, which is I believe a, to be a bug, you just clear them no problem. And that was at with eleven thousand um eleven thousand armor. We didn't even hit the 13,300 cap. You know what I mean? So, the build is is super satisfying to play. It's very, very fun, guys. So, yeah. That is the Staff of William Neeson build. Again, the build planner link will be down in the description below. Make sure to like the video. Comment down below what you guys think about some charge bolts with the Staff of William Neeson. And don't forget to subscribe, turn on notifications, and as always, stay gaming, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.